Hello everyone, Jekyll here. In the last episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Unpolished Gems, I mentioned a few massive dual tech cards, so you can say this is a part 2 or a dual successor of sort. Since in today's episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, a series focused entirely on card engines in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, their usage, relevance, and possible cost, we'll be talking about Master Duel engines. I'll cover a few which you can look into when playing the game. All of those are on the cheaper side when it comes to acquiring them, so that's also nice. Before we start though, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of those videos. Now, without further ado, let's get started. I decided to go with the alphabetical order, meaning that I'll start with the Assault Mode engine. It's already been covered in the series a long time ago, so some might not know what it does or how it works. Base of this engine is made out of three copies of Psy Reflector, one Assault Piece, and one Assault Mode Activate. Since Psy Reflector is a level 1 Psychic Tuner, the engine can be complemented with Emergency Teleports. So, how does this work exactly? When Psy Reflector is summoned, it can either add Assault Mode Activate or a card that mentions that trap specifically. Additionally, you can reveal a self mode activate and target a monster in your graveyard that's list that card. You can then summon that monster and boost its level by up to 4. The combo goes as follows. Summon Psy Reflector. Search out Assault Beast. Discard Assault Beast to search Assault Mode Activate. Use Psy Reflector's effect to summon back Assault Beast. This little interaction gives you access to a number of synchros due to its flexibility in level modulation or a link to play. The issue that might come up with this engine is the amount of garnets you're required to play. It's easy to set this up, but if you draw either Beast or Assault Mode Activate, then the engine kinda crumbles. With Beast you can still recover, but you just won't be going plus one. Drawing a South Mode Activate is much more devastating. When it comes to the cost of this engine, all cards are res from the Secret Mode change Secret Pack. Should you want to use Emergency Teleport as well, please remember it's a super rare from the Master Pack. When it comes to usage, I think anything Synchro focused should get their hands on this engine. Most it uses flexibility and also having a one card Synchro is very nice. The next engine also has been covered in the series before, in the third episode no less. God, it's been a while since I last talked about Fluffles. Anyway, it's a very interesting draw engine. It's made out of three copies of Wings, Bear and Toy Vendor. It can also be complemented with copies of Fluffle Dog and Dolphin. It works out by turboing out the engrave effect of Fluffle Wings, which allows you to banish Wings and one other Fluffle monster in order to draw a card. Afterwards, you can send a face-up Toy Vendor to the grave in order to draw an additional card. This prompts Toy Vendor's effect to trigger as a part of a new chain so it can add a fluffle monster from your deck to your hand. This makes an engine a plus one in card advantage at least, and is basically a draw two search one effect. Most people playing this game will tell you that anything that can give you free cards is good and should be played, however, this is not the case with this engine. It all boils down to the size. At lowest, the fluffle engine is made out of nine cards, at most, well, that's a lot, and is the core this engine hasn't seen much play. When it comes to acquiring the cards, all the main cards are normals, and both Dog and Dolphin are reds in the Fiendish Playthings secret pack, making the engine easily accessible, be it by pulling the cards or crafting them with the materials. When it comes to the engine's usability, I like to play it in Light Swan variants or basically anything that mills a lot. That's all due to the fact that the engine is heavily graveyard reliant, so incorporating it in such a deck is fairly easy, and all the pluses it can provide can be very helpful. Now time for something new, an engine that wasn't covered in the series yet. That's a nice change of pace. Anyway, this engine contains pendulum monsters, of all things. It's time to talk about Magispectres. And most of the time when you think of a Magispector engine, you think of Bunbuku searching out Kirin to provide bounce removal. However, since Kirin is banned in Master Duel and therefore unavailable, this cannot be used. That's where the other Magispector engine comes in. It focuses on Ogama and its ability to set the Magispector back row directly from the deck. The basic build would be one Ogama and triple back row. I'd personally recommend and Tempest, since it's a counter trap and its effect is similar to Solemn Strike. Since Ogama sets the card directly to the field, its effect cannot be negated by Ash Blossom. Additionally, it cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponent's card effect, making Veiler and Infinite Impermanence useless as well. Therefore, the only hand traps that are used in the metagame that can negate that effect are Herald of Orange Light and Cyframe Gear Gamma. In short, summoning Ogama in any way provides an additional disruption with your opponent being unable to prevent that. Not only that, but since Ogama is a pendulum monster, it can be easily summoned again and again and again. 
again, being an endless supply of disruptions. That fact is also the engine's biggest weakness. Due to Master Rule 4 making it so pendulums can only be summoned to either the extra monster zone or a zone a link monster points to, the recurring capabilities of the engine are heavily limited. Not only that, but also there's an issue regarding the advantage. The engine at first is a simple plus one, which is good when it comes to card economy. However, most of Magic Spectre spells and traps require a tribute of a wind spellcaster as cost, making them minus ones. In the grand scheme of things, uh, it's a one for one. When it comes to usage, I recommend pendulum decks, obviously, so you can resummon Ogama and gain even more advantage with that play. When it comes to getting all the cards, it's not that hard since Ogama and the back row cards are either normals or rares from one of two sets, be it legacy pack, which actually sucks ass, or advanced warrior secret pack. Due to the rarity, getting your hands on those is still extremely easy. And now we're back to the engines already covered in the series. Time Lords are the final engine in this episode, a series of level 10 fairy monsters, most of which are normals or rares in the impending assassination secret pack, except for one card, which is a super rare. Time Lords have a great variety of effects. The engine can provide the following, either mass bounce, monster removal with Metaion, mass spin, back row removal with Safion, non-targetable spot spin removal with Camion, or mass spin removal with Gabriel for a measly cut of a battle phase and most likely a normal summon. At this point you might be wondering how does the engine work? Well, it's quite simple. With the help of Time Maiden, which is the super app, you can search Time Lord directly from the deck. It can be any of the ones mentioned previously or one of those more focused on the burn. The sheer flexibility of the engine cannot be ignored. When it comes to build, it's mostly one or two maidens and one or two Time Lords. It actually depends. However, if you don't have the resources to craft the super rare time maiden or you don't have the gems to get the pack, you can still use time lord as spicy tech since those are rares and normals. With this timely matter, I'm concluding today's video. I hope to learn something new and the engines I talked about were something you were looking for. With that, I will see you all in the next video. Joko signing out. Peace.